61-year-old, Low Letha Toland Hall, known affectionately as Letha, was a vibrant, loving, and fiercely dedicated woman who poured her heart and soul into everything she did. Born and bred in Ohio, she cherished her roots and thrived in the embrace of her tight-knit family. An avid traveler, she found joy in visiting loved ones, tending to her garden, casting her line into the waters, and concocting delectable dishes in her kitchen, her buttery pound cake a particular masterpiece. With a degree in horticulture from Ohio State University, Letha embarked on a career journey that led her through various roles in the tax industry. From the Regional Income Tax Agency to the Bureau of Workers' Compensation, from the KIPP Academy of North Carolina to St. Vincent's Behavioral Health Center, she left her mark wherever she went. In 1991, she welcomed her beloved son, Mario John Hall, into the world, devoting herself wholeheartedly to his upbringing. Despite the bond she shared with her son, Letha made the difficult decision to return to Ohio from North Carolina in late 2023, yearning to reconnect with her roots and worship at her childhood church. Embracing the flexibility of part-time work, she found solace and independence in driving for Uber, relishing the freedom it afforded her as a senior. Little did she know that her pursuit of independence would lead to her untimely demise. In a cruel twist of fate, this vibrant 61-year-old woman fell victim to a heartless scam, ambushed and senselessly gunned down while simply trying to earn a living. Welcome to American Crime Femicide. Please, like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for future uploads. On March 25, while diligently working as an Uber driver, Hall accepted an offer to pick up a package, unaware that she was walking into a trap set by a despicable robo-scammer. This scammer, relentless in their pursuit, had already harassed the homeowner with false claims of being a law enforcement officer demanding money for a bond. As Hall approached the residence to retrieve the package, she was met by 81-year-old William Brock, brandishing a firearm, fueled by paranoia and aggression stoked by the scammer's deceit. Fearing for her life, Hall instinctively backed away, captured in chilling detail by the dashcam footage from her vehicle. In the video, we witness the harrowing moment as Hall retreats from Brock's home, only to be pursued by him with a deadly weapon in hand. The sound of gunfire shatters the air, punctuated by Hall's agonized cries for help, her desperate pleas echoing through the night. In a display of callous brutality, Brock, without remorse, shoots Hall multiple times, inflicting grievous wounds that would ultimately claim her life. Despite her pleas and cries, he callously continues his assault, indifferent to her suffering. Brock told police that he shot Hall while she was going to her car because he feared she was getting a gun. According to reports, authorities say William Brock had been receiving multiple threatening scam calls the morning of March 25th. The calls were concerning an incarcerated relative, and Brock was told to meet at the courthouse to pay a ransom of $12,000 in bail money, or they would kill him and his relative. Around the same time of the call, Lolita Hall received directions from the same person or an accomplice, instructing her to go to Brock's home to pick up a package for delivery. Dashcam video from Hall's car shows her arrive to Brock's home to pick up that package. According to reports from the Clark County Sheriff's Office, Brock allegedly had a gun. This video appears to confirm that. The incident report says Brock allegedly took Hall's phone and wouldn't let her leave, and when she tried to go, authorities say Brock then shot Hall. They started fighting, and he shot her two more times. Authorities received a call from Brock saying he had shot someone on his property because they were trying to rob him. When units arrived, they found Hall with multiple gunshot wounds, and Brock was bleeding from his head. Hall was flown to Kettering Hospital in Dayton, where she died. Reports say while officials were on scene, Brock's landline phone kept ringing, and when one officer picked it up, the man on the other line said he was an officer. And the real officer explained what happened and asked the caller to meet. And he agreed, but never showed up. We reached out to Uber and they responded with this statement saying in part, quote, There was no other way to describe this incident than a horrific tragedy. Our hearts continue to be with Lolita's loved ones as they grieve her sudden loss. We have been in contact with law enforcement and remain committed to supporting their investigation." End quote. 
Uber also went on to say the account of the individual who ordered the Uber trip has been banned. New at six, an 81 year old man is charged with murder in a strange case that involved a scam caller and an Uber driver in the wrong place at the wrong time. The Clark County Sheriff's Office saying William Brock is charged with the murder of Lolita Hall back on March 25th. The Sheriff's Office saying Brock received a scam call claiming a relative of his was in jail and needed money to get out. While on the phone, Lolita Hall, an Uber driver, was told to pick up a package at Brock's home. When she arrived, the sheriff's office says Brock held her at gunpoint and demanded to know who told her to come to his house. When she tried to leave, deputies say he shot her once, got into a scuffle, and shot her two more times, killing her. The sheriff's office says Hall had nothing to do with the scam. Brock pleaded not guilty and is being held on a $200,000 bond. Due to there being no active threat presented by Hall at any time during the encounter and Brock's failure to contact authorities for assistance while brandishing a firearm, during which he fired at and struck Hall multiple times, he was arrested and charged with murder. He has since posted bond and is awaiting his preliminary trial scheduled for April 22nd. Though justice may have been swift in this instance, it offers scant comfort to Letha's grieving family and friends. On April 5th, Letha was laid to rest, her funeral marked by heartfelt tributes from numerous individuals, including her son. All right, good morning. Morning. Good morning. There we go. Ah, so if you saw me, you saw my mom. And if you saw my mom, you more than likely saw me. We had a bond like no other. Sure, she was my mother first and foremost. So that came with the strictness, being stern, and giving me her unwanted opinions. <laughs> But she was also my best friend. She was someone I can talk to and come to about anything and everything. We talked every day, multiple times a day, especially with me being out of state. She would randomly call me and say, hey, what you doing? Me, nothing. What do you want, lady? I just wanted to see what the weather was in South Carolina today. Really? Goodbye. Her, I love you. I love you too. That's just many of the different types of calls that we would have, and I'm going to miss that. It's been 12 days and counting since I last heard her voice, and that's what hurts the most. But to my village, near and far, you have all been handpicked by her since day one leading up to today. Some of you know me for years, some I've known for only a few months, some I've never met. But I'm sure she gave you the rundown of me, her baby. I may not need you today or six months from now, but I will need you down the road. So, if I randomly call you, don't be alarmed. I just need to talk and hear y'all's voices. To my Lolo, my Lo Cree, my Lee Lackey, my mom. You are my light, my rock my heart, my everything. I thank you for all your sacrifices and all the things you have instilled in me. You are the best mom that anyone could ask for, and I promise to continue to make you proud. So to end this, I'm going to read a little snippet from our favorite song that we would dance to, clean up to, FaceTime to, or drive with no destination to. It's a song called My Everything by Mary J. Blige. And it goes, it 
It's all because of you. I've never sat in blue. You brighten up my day in your own special way. Whenever you're around, I'm never feeling down. You are my trusted friend, and you I can depend. So to you, my lady, I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you. This appalling tragedy was not only deeply disturbing but entirely avoidable. An innocent elderly woman, merely going about her job, was callously gunned down without a moment's hesitation. Many are rightfully questioning whether Brock's decision to snuff out Letha's life was motivated by racism. Would he have afforded a white woman the opportunity to explain herself or waited for law enforcement to intervene? As the shattered family mourns their devastating loss, we implore you to keep them firmly in your thoughts and prayers. May Lo Letha Toland Hall find eternal peace amidst the turmoil wrought by this senseless act of violence.